Hello, everyone. I'm truly honored to be here today with a distinguished author whose literary contributions have garnered awards and touched the hearts of readers worldwide. A celebrated author of formerly George, now retitled Melissa, a groundbreaking novel featuring a transgender girl, which received numerous accolades, including the Stonewall Book Award, Lambda Literary Award, and Children's Choice Award. Their second novel, You Don't Know Everything, Jilly P, continued to exemplify their commitment to telling stories that resonate with young readers while promoting inclusivity and diversity. Today, we have the privilege of discussing their journey as a genderqueer individual and their unwavering dedication to unbanning important books, a cause that has earned them well-deserved recognition in the literary world. Please welcome to Unbanned Coolies, Alex Gina. Books have evolved to become more diverse in recent years compared to two decades ago, yet there's still progress to be made. We now have access to a wider range of diverse voices, and it's hopeful that as our efforts continue to prevent book bans, more kids can find representation in literature. Thinking back to your own childhood, did you have a particular book that truly captivated you or provided a sense of belonging? Um, I certainly didn't have books that showed uh a trans experience or a gender queer experience. Uh, definitely there are plenty of books about kids who are bookish and weird and different. So I connected with that some. Uh, I think perhaps a character that I really latched to in some ways was Milo from The Phantom Tollbooth. Uh, he is brought through this world of wordplay and number play and puns and jokes and just all of these different ways of playing with language and his life goes from drab and boring to having so much to do. And I, 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 yeah, I connect with that. One of your most renowned books now retitled Melissa features a transgender girl as the main character. What inspired you to write the story and what impact have you seen it have on the readers? Well, like I said, when I was growing up, there weren't, books with trans characters for trans kids widely available they weren't they weren't traditional publishers were not putting them out and when I was an adult in the early 2000s they still didn't exist and I thought of myself as a writer and I said well how hard could it be to write a book it is very hard to write a book um, it took me about over a dozen years to write this book and during that dozen years uh, culture started to shift. So I started off with, can I write a book with a trans character? And then as trans awareness became uh, more prevalent in culture, it went from being something that was effectively impossible to, yeah, I want to be the first ones to like get this story out because I have been working on it for a while and I am writing it from within community. And it was just um like i'd always loved middle grade as a as a genre of writing of reading and it just resonated with me to go there the fight to unbanned books have been a significant part of your advocacy can you tell us more about your efforts in this area and why it's so important um it is super important um it is hard to engage with individuals who don't want people like me to exist, much less exist in front of their children, much less be their children. Um, so it does it does take a toll, and I am careful about where I expend my energy, uh, but I do expend my energy because it is vitally important that kids have access to literature, and it is vitally important that even <clears throat> that all kids have access to literature, including those parents who are fighting and saying, well, my kid shouldn't have to see that. Well, yes, even your child gets to see the world that we live in. Uh, if you don't show children the world that we live in, if you don't give them the opportunity to see the world we live in, they will be unprepared for the world. And 
adults who are unprepared for the world is frankly, frankly, how we have violence against trans people because we have people who get scared. We have cisgender people, people who aren't trans who get scared. And so if I can help keep people safe by showing folks who's in the world, I am going to do that to the best of my ability. And that is my advocacy is to keep writing stories. Can we empower LGBTQ plus youth in schools and communities? And what advice do you have for readers who resonate with your book's queer characters and are navigating their gender identity? Um, first, I will say that they shouldn't have to. Students have, shouldn't have to advocate for advocate for a place that is queer friendly, that place that is safe for them. And yet also they do. And so they should. Right. Um, and young people are forces and they're the wisest they've ever been and maybe the wisest they'll ever be. And so my biggest advice for folks is to have connections, to have your people. And that is both in terms of advocacy. One person cannot create a boycott, but three people can create a thing that can turn into 30 people. 30 people can do a lot or whatever the scales are, whatever the numbers are. You need people to bounce those ideas off of to really get going and to pick yourselves back up and to decide where, what battles you're going to fight and when you're going to go, you know what, we just have to let that be to protect ourselves. Um, and that's the same, same advice that I give to young people who are figuring out who they are is to have a space that you can go to because yes, things will sometimes sucks things will sometimes be bad and you deserve somewhere safe to bring those concerns and fears to and set that up for yourself before you're in crisis because the world the world is going to sometimes throw and you know have your shield ready do you have a safe space you go to oh i love that question um when I was now, yes, I do. Now I have a very strong community. Um, there are very few people in my life that I can't go to, um, you know, to different extents, like people who I haven't talked to, people who I talk to every couple times a year, I'm not going to like ask them to like put me up on their couch. But like, I don't have people in my life that I don't want to give to and that I that don't want to give to me by and large. Um, when I was younger, it was a lot harder. I did have one really close friend and they didn't know about gender stuff, but neither did I. So right, we can't fault anyone there, but yeah, it is really important to have someone. And I will say that uh, a journal can sometimes be that someone, like writing those ideas out can really help. And hotlines can really also be helpful to have someone to talk to all like, all all the ways that you can communicate communicate your work has been instrumental in creating more diverse and inclusive literature for young people what advice would you give to aspiring authors who want to tackle important social issues through their writing um several pieces of advice first of all to anyone who wants to write um read read a lot secondly um, you may give up, you may give up a hundred times and then pick it back up a hundred and one. Like if you are writing representation, it can be difficult. Um, and then there's a trickier question, which is, are you writing representation that you are part of, that you are connected with? Are these the people that you are, that you love, that you laugh with, that you cry with, that you eat with? Then yes share those stories, make them as authentic and real and diverse as they can be. And because you were writing the way are authentic and real and diverse. If you saw someone on the street once and you thought that person needs representation, you cannot provide visibility to someone you are not. That doesn't mean that you write everyone who is just like you in all of your stories. 
But when you're writing the issues of difference, when you're writing the issues of what it means to be marginalized, what it means to have things happen to you because of who you are and how people see you, it it's different if it's coming from a place of someone who's lived and been with it. And given the limitations of how many books can be published and how many books can be read, if you are taking up the space of someone else's voice, I would really ask you to think about why. Um, and then if you are that person who you're like, well, I don't know if that's me. If you're saying, I don't know that that's me, it's because it's you. It's the people who are convinced that they can write anyone's story who it isn't. Right? There's a lot of people like, oh, I'm on the border. Yeah, exactly. The borders are just as marginalized. Literally, like the borders are the margin. So, oh, I don't have the typical story. There is no typical story. It's that mainstream person, probably white, probably cisgender. If we're talking about from America, probably grew up here and speaks English as their first and probably only language. That is the person whose experience is limited. Um, and that person has plenty of great stories to tell. And we want to hear those stories and we want to hear the other stories as well. Right. That's not like this is the, Oh, this story is better because it's diverse. Is this story is better because it's authentic. And that story is better when it's authentic. To who they was two of these different people are. Lastly, can you tell us any upcoming projects or, or books working on right now? Um, I can. Well, I can if I can. I can first tell you what just happened, which is that Green came out. Um, literally this month, and Green is the third book in the Melissa series, and it is about a non-binary kid who has their first crush, and they, um want to be in the play of Wizard of Oz. So there's lots of history and theater history and queer history sort of that folds into that. Um, and then moving forward, I am thinking I'm leaving that world and I'm writing right now about a kid who's sort of a one best friend sort of kid and they spend the summer without that best friend and they don't think of themselves as someone who can get lonely, but now they're lonely. And sort of teasing that at the part, as someone who's a very much an introvert, um, I can also get lonely. And those are, those are two different things, right? It is great to be alone. It is not so great to feel like there's not someone you can go to. Your experiences, insights, and unwavering advocacy have enriched us all. Your courage admits adversity and your passionate commitment to championing diversity and inclusivity in literature cannot be understated. The stories you tell through your work not only captivate, but also serve as vital lifelines, nurturing understanding and empathy in our world. Your journey offers lessons that we can all benefit from. From the bottom of my heart, Alex, thank you for your time and the priceless mark you've made our world. Thank you so much, Christopher. And I'm glad that that I did hear that. That was very sweet. And thank you for what you do, because like I said, you shouldn't have to be doing this advocacy. And I'm glad that you are. Thank you for your kind words.